but uh, the, this Uriya part that I did individually, that was Tomara Mora Swaro Rumila no Shristi Kori Chalo Aikotana. So that's very close to my heart. Welcome to another melodious episode of Beyond Her Story on Wonder Woman Wednesday. Now, today we have the privilege of introducing you to the multi-talented Vijaya Shankar from Mumbai. She is not just a talented vocalist, but she is also a linguist, a writer, and a composer. Now, from being a part of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar Ananda Vaibhavam to Mile Suru Mera Tumhara to lending her voice to more than two thousand jingles, of which some are iconic ones. Vijaya has sung it all. She made her debut in Bollywood as a music director and singer for comedy films like Banke Ki Crazy Barat, Marathi film like Vegli Vat, Hindi film Kale Khud or Ruth. And she has also composed for various spiritual albums and animation films and public service songs. She is the recipient of Sahitya Kala Parishad Youth Award, Government of India Scholarship, Maharashtra Gaurav Award. Which was awarded by our late president Sri Venkat Raman to name a few. Vijaya has also represented India at the 67th UN Women's Commission in March 2023. She is a board of trustee in Indian Development Foundation NGO. She is a meditator. She is an advanced healer, and she is also a specialized voice coach. Her journey has been nothing short of incredible, having worked with the legendary singers, composers, and musicians. And we are so thrilled to have her with us today. So, welcome, Ma uh, Vijaya, to Beyond Her Story. Namaste. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, wow. And. Uh, you know, about after hearing about your musical journey, the first question that came to my mind was like, what was it that sparked your love for music? Because we have uh, had a couple of other singers too on this show, and we see that each one has a different story to tell about how it started. So, what was it that was the reason for your musical journey? Yeah. So, like you said, you've had some wonderful artists. Have I've uh, watched them, some amazing artists, Ronki, Neet, and then Abala, many, many more, of course. Yeah. So each one has their journey. As for me, uh, my ma my mom said that uh, even before I started talking at the age of two, I used to repeat Ayipa uh, bhajans. My dad, uh, yeah, my dad was uh, uh, doing that uh, 40 days mandala and he used to go for Ayipa bhajans and all. He was a natural singer. So my mother said that even before uh, I could speak, I should I used to pick up songs. So I don't know okay. what you call this. Uh, it was yeah. uh, in born maybe the previous Denma or Karma, if we go that route. Yeah. Yes, I started singing and then she waited for me to be five years of age. That's when she put me into class. But I, like a child, I was just singing, singing. At no point in time did I think that I could make a profession out of it. Until I was okay. married and my two kids were born. And my husband okay. said, I think you can make it a profession. Wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Normally people oh. give up after marriage yes. and children. Marriage, yeah. It's I the reverse. Give up after two children. Oh, wow. That's an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we um, better, right. We really don't know. Sometimes we don't even expect certain things. They yes. happen. Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, I think you also believe like whatever happens, uh, happens at a certain time and when you are actually ready for it and things like that, right? It falls in place when it has to happen. Yeah, the universe has its own uh, ways to probably, it knows that when should I give her, when can she handle or how will she handle? Yeah. It's on. So you've had an amazing musical journey, right? You have, uh, you know, worked with a lot of uh, composers and, uh, you know, 
like you worked with the legendary composers music directors and you yourself are a musical uh, you are a composer yourself so yeah. how did all this shape up into your journey like you started and then like how did this route happen yeah so uh, like i said uh, when i was singing and i sang for so many years of my life like uh, from the age of 2 if i started so early 20s uh, yes i did get married in early 20 itself but then also i didn't think uh, i was like any other tambram family where a girl was needed to learn singing and she would sing in the navratri uh, bom mm. uh, that's uh, no the golu that we call it there yeah, or at the family functions and i tended there i in, even in my wildest dream i didn't perceive myself as a uh, as a singer or somebody who could do it professionally and because i was this uh, little reserved and uh, anxious okay. person like even in during college festivals i would go i would win practically every every competition that i went within mumbai and out of mumbai still that didn't give me a confidence still i didn't know my talent or the the gift that i had got Uh, yeah. so i was always nervous to get on to a stage or get on to a mic or mm-hmm. everything so it so happened that uh, when we came to mumbai and uh, with our first child and uh, my husband said are you going to sit at home just go start singing you have come to this place the mecca of music and you should do something yeah. said, what do i do how do i do he said how do i do you figure it out and he said all this not in those that time the google was not there <laughs> yeah. google search and even if there was we didn't have that kind of all of us didn't have so many laptops and this and that one had to correct but yes uh, i did uh, do my own things and try to get a list of uh, uh, things uh, the composers from just dial i took a print out and each way for every day i used to keep some 4545 amidst the routine of being a mother a wife and so many roles that i would have had to play i would call and then they would say acha aap next week call kijiye this that that all then finally yeah. when it all started happening people some of them started calling and i didn't know i had a one year old child and i didn't know what to do so i would take yeah. the kid uh, the diaper bag my handbag and use different modes of transport and reach a place so much so that in one of the places when actually the audition was going to happen she started crying okay so i just took her on my lap i was give i gave her milk from the feeding bottle and i was doing my audition okay. <laughs> that's what yeah. got me my first yeah. recording vico vico turmeric okay uh, uh, iconic uh, jingle so yeah yeah in one of the about the bride bunno ko aao pyari se that one so and then uh, they were all good to me and a uh, c- couple of auditions happened like this i used to take her and key or somebody would hold her i would give an audition i but i knew that this was not going to go this is not the way to go yeah then uh, a lot of people came to me and said that you are coming like a proper housewife and a mother but you're coming to an industry which is totally commercial he said you have to sort it out and do your own things so that's when uh, i started leaving her at my brother's place then i would come travel and slowly things started from a sari clad uh, uh, girl to you know getting back to jeans and kurti and salwar kameez and I, still i was this reticent person i would not talk so this journey slowly 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 one jingle led to the other to the other to the other at a time came and i was expecting my second so at that point in time i couldn't sit at uh, home or i didn't want to leave my music so i started uh, doing animation series for children fun and learn series oh, wow yeah okay so i thought i that could help my children growing up years i could tell them those things at the same time i could make it as a work also yeah. so about four series as i started writing i just wrote one set and they really liked I said you write it. I said I don't write, but they said you've written very well. So I ended yeah. up writing each series had about ten sets of uh, uh, you call them poems or you call them um, about fruits and vegetables and trees and animals, domestic okay. animals, wild animals like that. Okay. Oh, and the series was really I they gave me fourteen 
series and it went on. I was happy being at home, taking care of my children, yeah. writing this. And once they were all ready, I would go hit the studio and that way I could Record. be home. Oh, wow, yeah. So then, I, then I started doing spiritual albums, same thing. I would compose. And then just before recording, 10, 10 15 days, I would not be you know, so much at home. I would be more at work. So this way I had to keep managing, managing. The whole process, it kind of went hand in hand, singing and composing. Okay. I didn't dream to be a singer. I didn't dream to be a composer. I didn't dream to be a voiceover artist. Everything one after it the up. other kept happening. Started happening. Yeah. 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 I think it's a fantastic yeah, example people... of how things fall in place. <laughs> Actually, when people start receiving it well, no, then you get your confidence that, okay, Correct. fine. I'm being accepted. So I should keep doing more of it. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So uh, how about like, uh, how did the other things come into place in terms of, you know, uh, working for uh, like the Mile Sur Mera Tumhara? I think that was yeah. a fantastic uh, yeah. uh, anthem kind of thing at that point of time. So how did that come about and how was your experience? Okay. Like I said, uh, I was in the jingle field and why yeah. jingle? Because that uh, did not demand so much from me. If I had to become a concert singer back then with two kids, a lot of riyas and uh, taking care of children and family was not. So I kept it aside, but I wanted to keep my music alive. So the jingles were happening. So during one such process, uh, Sir Louis Bank uh, was doing this. The first Milesur, which had Lataji and Bhim Sen Joshi and Pandit yeah. and all. So that is not that. They did it in the second written of yeah. Milesur, which was called Phir Milesur. Mera Phir Tumara, Milesur, yeah. In which uh, all our actors, the stars were there, Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, the le our legendary singers, Sonu Nigam, and so many people were there. So in yeah. that, uh, so they were uh, looking for... Uh, somebody to you know be around for the South Indian segment of the Malayalam Tamil and all. Okay. So I had this good fortune of uh, you know helping out uh, Louis sir with you know when he was doing the composition to be around and you know give those South Indian nuances to that. And then that's when he took my vocals then uh, they wanted a singer for Uriya solo. So I did the Uriya solo also. The South Indian, South Indian languages were done by male vocalists and you know, like Yeshuda mm -hmm. sir and Vijay Yeshuda. Yeah. So it just happened. Okay. When you actually go for something, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it just yeah. falls on your lap. So Phir Mile Sur was one such thing that happened. I was so overjoyed about being a part of such an iconic uh, composition. Yeah. And Louis Banks sir is amazing. It was wonderful experience. Yeah. How about the Shri Shri Ravi Shankar's uh, uh, the Again, thing? Uh, the you... yeah. yeah. So that also happened as I was doing. Uh, we have this amazing composer called Shri Ramesh when I come in south. He okay. he is the composer for uh, Hollywood uh, film like Ramanujan. That Ramanujan. Okay. Yeah, the mathematician. Then he gave music for Nalada Mayanti. He's given for quite a few films and fantastic musician par excellence. So okay. when I had uh, met him a couple of times and we did some scratch for some films on, you know, so that's when he had this project and he said, uh, will you do it? In fact, this came to me after my album with him called Moksha Mantras of Shiva, which I did for Times Music. Okay. So, okay. It's an amazing album. You should go and uh, listen to it. Moksha Mantras of Shiva by Times Music. Uh, so this, I went to Chennai and uh, Mr. Ramesh Vinayakam got the entire arrangement done. So I told uh, sir that uh, this is a spiritual album, Sanskrit. But so far we've all had... Uh, Spiritual Indian means there was a certain pattern of music that happened. So I said, okay. I want to change the whole scenario. I want this to be global. Mm. And we began this uh, whole thing by using English flute and piano. I can claim that it was one of the first kinds to make fusion into uh, uh, spiritual things. 
I mean, I, yeah. I would claim it. After that, so many have come. Yeah, yeah. So, true. Uh, Moksha Mantras of Shiva, this was uh, way back in 2005. So after that, uh, he was doing Nadabai Bhavam for Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. So he made me sing that. So Moksha okay. Mantras was a ethereal experience for me. Right from doing the scratch to composing to singing to making little children sing and the musicians play. Fantastic. So how answer. much time did all this take? Like from composition to recording and having from everything this, in place? Uh, from composition to getting done, it took us about three weeks. Okay. Nice. Because, uh, we used complete live musicians. The talented musicians from Chennai. Amazing musicians. Uh, Floaters yeah. and uh, uh, Dilruba and uh, piano and so many other things. Like many, many instruments that were not heard in a traditional spiritual album yeah no actually uh, that is one thing which I have noticed after like we know that you know India is full of talent but uh, being a part of this uh, Wonder Woman Wednesday has made me connect to so much talent and you know it's it's just amazing because uh, you know, it's even in singing, you take uh, musical journeys, composing, everything, you know, there's so much talent in India. I think it's just a matter of you being in the right place at the right time, kind of, okay. which uh, creates the uh, in, yeah, yeah. outcomes. Talents. I'm sure there are many, many more who are talented yeah. than me who are still not seen or heard and there have been there are people that are not as talented as even I am, but that have made names. So it's a matter of that is a different factor that we talk about. But yeah. yes, the soil has abundant talent. Abundant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now coming back to your jingles journey, uh, I think you've done over two thousand jingles, right? And in all languages. So how yes. did you manage uh, many languages? I mean. <laughs> So how did you manage, uh, I think, Sin Sinhalese and all you have done, right? Yeah, yeah. Sinhalese, Nepali. Yeah, Manati. so how did that happen? Or did you learn the language for it? or? Uh, actually, Sneha, what happened is, I, I like I said, I didn't know I was going to become a singer, composer. Voice voice. Similarly, I didn't know I had a flair for languages. I just realized that I started speaking those languages. Like, oh, Tamil wow. is my mother tongue. I just, Correct, uh, yeah. I was, I was, uh, you know, born in Jimshedpur, raised in Calcutta till my 10th standard. But till then, I was not exposed to the Bengali speaking and everything because we were in a South Indian locality. Yeah. Went to Delhi. We we lived in a society called Purbasha, where the Bengalis were there. So it's only after leaving Calcutta, my strength in the Bangla came. Suddenly realized I could pick up Telugu, I could pick up Malayalam, I could pick up languages like with ease. Maybe my mm -hmm. observation skills were more. Yeah, and, correct. Uh, I could easily pick up, okay, for this situation, they are saying this. And so much so that when I started doing uh, jingles uh, in the ad industry, each language supervisor would claim that I belong to their state. <laughs> and that felt like an honor. A Malu would say, no, no, she's a Malayali. A Bengali would say, no, no, she's a Bengali. So I used to feel like really elated at yeah. the same. So full of gratitude. Uh, even today, any language you put me in that place or space for a couple of months, I have the, somewhere uh, the divine has blessed me to be able to pick up those frequencies and converse uh, in that language. Yeah. So, so how many and, languages do you know? Or have you sung in? I've sung in over 20 including even Toulouse and Konkani, Maithili, wow. Bhojpuri, uh, Chhattisgadi. So many have sung. Like I said, Nepali, wow. Arunachali, Assamese. So many have sung. And the best the, the best compliments I've got is like I they say nobody can make out that you are a non-state person. So that's yeah, like a yeah. huge compliment. Compliment. Which is what yeah. I implement as a voice coach. I feel if you practice sounds from different parts of your oral cavity, Mm -hmm. You can sing any language. It's basically oh. pushing air to... A, yeah, suppose I'm doing Malayalam. And the mm -hmm. huh? So, mm -hmm. I, I know that I have to push the air here and then release. Kire, mm -hmm. 
a Bengali. So I would, I realize that these, these are where you take the air and release. Gives a certain sound to a language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think when you explain it that way, you know, you start thinking about it. Otherwise, uh, as we speak, we don't even think like uh, ah. how the different sounds are formed or how it comes right. about. These were my observations. Wherever I went, I started observing, okay, the Northeast people use a certain space. Then I went into observing the the foreign, uh, the way they would pick up or uh, the way they would say. So I said, basically what it is, the air carries the sound. The vocal yeah. cord is yeah. just the strumming mm. like it just touches yeah. and facilitates the sound to travel right. so it's based on where hello means that means you're pushing the air to base of your oral cavity and doing Correct. so i know that i'm pushing it here these things made me and i said okay i have to make this a part of my teaching and uh so that's how my interest in languages grew i kept observing i kept i still keep observing yeah, that helps me a lot. So is it that uh, after, uh, you know, doing it in multiple languages, that is when you started looking into the voice coaching part of it? Or have you been a voice coach uh, from beginning? Uh, yeah, I was a music teacher. I was not a voice coach. Okay. So the okay. voice coaching has, uh, yes, bo everything has a role to play. The jingles that I was doing, the kind of... Uh, uh, the, See, in 30 seconds, you have to sell. Yeah. So there, there, there used to be attitude ones. There used to be soft ones. There used to be happy ones. But sometimes you get rejected. Hmm. That, oh, no, your attitude is not there. Yeah. Uh, I think it's classical. So then I said, uh, why? Then some, oh, your pitch is not hitting, you know. You're like, uh... so all these used to make me think that if an instrument could play everything, isn't my voice also an instrument? Should I not start exploring that area? Should I not start start seeing aisa kya hai that I cannot do? Yeah. yeah. This started pushing me into that whole thing of doing self-research. So wherever you go, you get to learn music. People teach you songs. People teach you sargam. People teach you, teach you alaptan. But nobody ever speaks about this instrument called voice and how is it used or how does it work. Yeah, yeah. So I went to many teachers. Everybody taught me singing. Ragas. How to sing and, yeah. so I said, if I only knew how to sing, maybe I wouldn't have faced these humiliations. Or at hindsight, I, I, hindsight, I think that those humiliations were required so that I could do them. Yeah, yeah. Like KK was required for Ram to become the King Rama. Yeah, so yeah. needed as an instrument for this whole Ramayana to happen. The same Good. way. I needed these humiliations, disappointments, uh, sarcasms. So that yeah. made me work towards it. And uh, I kind of started understanding. Okay, Usha ji, Usha Utub ji does it from here. Kavita ji does from here. Lata ji does from here. Somebody else does from here. So that's exactly. Then once I got a confidence and a hang of it and I recorded myself and saw that, okay, I was in the right track. I said, now it's time to share. Wow. So, uh, I mean, is it like, let's say the way I speak and I can do changes by just coaching my voice in a proper way? Is it like that? Yes. yes. A whole okay. lot of us don't even know how attractive our voice is. Yeah. Nobody gives a, a, a like I said, nobody uh, focuses on that aspect. Correct. As correct. I could have grown up saying, um, Amma, and some personalities just end up being that. Yes. And there are some male voices that are, hello. So if at the, if at the right time they were thought, no, you're speaking from this area. If you speak from here, if you throw your air in this place and then deliver, you can get a better texture. Yeah, so I have yeah. two that um, boys who've come with, uh, ma'am, mujhe aap se gana hai. And today they're ma'am. 
Yeah. So I'm so happy to see that transition from where yeah. the child came and where he or she is today. Yeah, yeah. Suppose I'm, there's a fire starting in my heart. This has a certain throw in it. Yeah. This has a different thing. Yeah. There are kawals. So I used to wonder, you know, why his voice is coming like that? Why somebody else is... So then I realized, okay, this is a glottis voice. This is a focus voice. This is a cavity voice. That is a bass voice. Wow. So you'd be surprised to the different ways we can produce a voice. Yeah. And we can be master chefs of our voice. Yeah, I think like you said, we don't give so much importance and we don't even know that, you know, if you do certain things, it may change also, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Is there a uh, age by which this needs to be done or anybody can do it at any age once they get coached? Anybody can do it at any age. But ideally, if we start from the uh, starting uh, early ages, it's easy to you know build up a voice. Yeah. Unlearning okay. is the most difficult task. Suppose you've learned a certain way. It's like repairing something and buying something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah. So ideally, from the start, when the child is able to comprehend, a five-year-old will not. For a five-year-old up to 10, 12 years, I'll have to just do random things and figure out. Because if I'm yeah. going to talk jargons and techniques, the child will not learn. Correct, when the correct. child is up to an age when it can comprehend, oh, breathe like this, deep breathing, this, speak from here, keep your chin sharp, keep your cheeks up, and so many things, the child will be able to take instructions. So today I teach a lot of industry uh, singers, playback singers okay. and performers, rock singers. So for rock singers, there's, there's so much into that aggression mode, they don't know how to unlearn that and sing a normal song. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's where I come into picture. I tell them, no, you can do this with ease. And everything, trust me, everything is within us. I'm not giving anything. It is within you. I'm bringing it out. That is all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the awareness is also not there, right? With respect to how this, this can... Yeah. In Indian music particularly, this whole uh, system of voice culture or knowing a voice has not been there as much as in Western. In India, we, we've given a lot of importance to the, uh, the nuances, the gamakas. We start a song in a texture and then we work upon the gamakas, the khatkas, the murki, the taan, alap, everything... A little bit of here and there, Shruti goes, but that has also taken as a part of the performance. Unlike yeah. the Western singing, where there may not be so much of gamakas and this and that, but they play a lot on the vocal dynamics, the textural changes, and and the way they, they say certain things, the way they go from a husky or a subtle voice to a little, really octave voice in the same song itself. Yeah, in one song yeah. itself, they show you a gamut of vocal texture. Yeah. So I feel our strength and their strength put together can bring about a, you know, beautiful, beautiful singing talents too. Yeah. Well, one doesn't have to stay and think that I'm only a Western singer, I'm only a class. No. You can become a master of your voice. Yeah. If I do like so this needs that weight they call in Karnatic. Your voice yeah. range has to be less. It can't be too shrieky and shrill. Then they say you're, you're not singing Karnatic, you're singing a light music. For the longest yeah. time, I had that problem. I had very high frequency voice. So all these I'm able to work today. So immediately, yeah. I know. 
So not just the texture, the vibe also. Mahaga, that is. This is. I can't do. That means yeah. I am not. I'm. I'm not getting out of my system of doing the Karnatak. Yes. Yeah. It's like you go for a, a South Indian wedding. You dress in a certain way. You go to a lounge. You dress in a certain way. Correct. So similarly. So, yes. Yeah, similarly, you need to just completely detach yourself from the other style, or the other tone, or the other yeah. dynamic. Everything it has to be tailor made as per a situation. Yeah. You have to bring in that style, that tonality. Yeah. So you've been trained in both Karnatic and Hindustani, right? Yes, I have had the good fortune of learning under many, many good gurus. Starting from Calcutta, Srimati Kamakshi Balasubramanian, my first guru. Then she, OV Subramanian, TRS, and all. I did from the Delhi University also. Then I learned Ghazal singing from late Sri Mohinder Sarinji. And so many gurus I've had in my whole journey. Uh, even now, I keep taking lessons from my teachers as and when I can because learning is an ongoing process. And yeah. I did go to an opera teacher to do uh, to understand about how those people hit certain high notes. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. Indian music, it's normally three octave range, lower, middle, high. Yeah. But they go beyond higher than the high. And all. So I was a little, you know, intrigued and I wanted to know what was happening. So I went there. So all these gave me a lot of things. Still, I wasn't clear. Because nobody was talking about the instrument voice. So then I started doing my research. Now what I teach my students is what I have understood hmm. yeah. about the instrument called voice and how to play it. I share that with my students. I think you have gained uh, so much knowledge in all these years, right? That uh, it makes it... And like you said, you are very observant too. That adds on to what you know, what you've observed and what you're researching on and all that together, I think, has given rise to this wonderful uh, yeah. uh, uh, these no, things about the voice coaching. Yes, It's an ongoing thing. Uh, sometimes while teaching, there is a revelation. Oh, wow. So even okay. teaching, I thank my students also because when they ask me questions, that yeah. makes me do more research and more uh, things. So I'm I'm thankful to them for choosing me. And yeah. uh, similarly, uh, and uh, the exposure to uh, having lived in different places, like in, in Bengal, in Delhi, in down south, in Mumbai. So expo getting exposed to different cultures, different uh, sounds, different music. So each time you hear and see, the brain starts working in a different way. Yeah, yeah. But the a learning. Yeah. So, uh, like, do you approach each genre differently? Or now that you understand the entire thing, it becomes easier for you to approach yes. the... Yeah. See, when you do something from a state of awareness, yeah. what you do is very different from you. Somebody says, do this and you're figuring out. Yeah. Figuring out sometimes uh, gives away your flaws or your weakness. You may not sound exactly the way you should be. Yeah, yeah. But when you do it from a state of knowing, then what you put across is different. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Having said that, I'm not the most celebrated uh, known singer or uh, uh, because I've not been on the mainstream so much. I've not yeah. been... Jingles, people hear, people like jingles. Who knows what? who is the singer? Who Who's, even cares? Who knows yeah. who is this? Yeah, correct. Or our spiritual. Or today, anything you do it on the mainstream. I've done um, playback in Kannada films as well. A lot of Kannada films have sung with okay. some of the legendary singers. Agudhi Ji, Kailash Kher, Kartik, Benny Dayal. So many people have sung. Hari Haranji, Shankar Mahadevan. So I've yeah. had... But then they say, no, that overnight popularity comes with one particular song or one thing. That has not happened. 
but i've mm. had the experience of exploring different kinds of songs singing in a different with different people having different experiences that way yes it has enriched me a lot so for me yeah. that is growing doesn't yeah, matter correct. if the public at large or the aam janta that like they call here doesn't know but the industry does know me the industry does respect me yeah and all of us are not made for everything right each one yes, of us are yeah. our niche so i'm i'm happy i'm i'm happy about the way it's coming out and my life is growing as a musician it's i'm very happy yeah and you also been fortunate uh, to be a part of the patriotic song mataram right for 75th uh, yes, independence yes, yes. yeah so how was that experience and uh, anything that you'd like to share about it yeah we uh, like uh, we have uh, an association called music composers association which okay. has been uh, this forum has been created for the well being of the composers so that you know what a lot of times you compose you don't get paid or your payments are delayed or somebody does something so basically it's a forum uh, to take care of the musicians and their uh, issues yeah. and address their issues and give the right solutions and all so the, there are uh, two wings like the, the the male composers and the female composers i was a part of the okay. composer associations committee so there were a lot of women composer of which three of us uh, came together which is uh, uh, sangeeta pant uh, who is the president of the forum then uh, rajalakshmi uh, sanjay and myself vijay shankar we came up and uh, we were bombarding uh, the the committee the main committee said why don't you guys come up something and we were uh, jamming and we were exchanging throwing this that that that, that and all and ended up coming with this beautiful melody called mathuram wow. and uh, it struck to us that being the 75th uh, year we should have 75 musicians so at least 75 artists involved it could be the backstage to a, a spot boy to a tea boy so we had about 75 people and uh, since i've had uh, a good rapport with a lot of these musicians i could uh, bring on board a lot of established musicians and that turned out to be a beautiful a beautiful beautiful uh, tribute to our nation yeah so mathram turned out to be so beautiful so much so that the ministry of culture uh, contacted yeah. dr mahadevan ji and then he asked me and i said of course we can it's me so it was an honor and a brilliant experience when you work with legendary and experienced musicians you know just looking at them you learn so much yeah and it was uh, some of them didn't uh, um, come to studio some of them sent it across because it was just then we were coming out of a pandemic but still yeah uh, correct correct yes everything was so so fabulous everything fell in place and yeah and uh, you've received several awards and recognition also uh, for your contribution to music right so how does it make you feel i'm sure it's like a, a moment of pride uh, how does it make you feel i would say uh, i'm nowhere actually i'm nowhere i shouldn't even be mentioning but uh, since you had asked to give a, a, a or since i had to mention about what i've done i had to mention it but uh, trust me i don't keep any of them on display because it makes me feel real uncomfortable because the very maestros that have done some legendary work i feel for someone like me maybe the state recognizes or motivates so giving an award is entrusting you with more responsibility to do better and better it is nothing to feel proud about it is like more even more stressful because by pointing you at something they're saying you better handle it carefully <laughs> you know it's a whole uh, responsibility yes it does make you feel good but sometimes i feel we should all go beyond all this and yeah. be more connected uh, to our art and just delve deeply into it award reward or no award the best reward yeah. is the audience loves you and they start to appreciate true. yeah 
when someone says a lot of people come to me and say is your album has healed me i came from my deathbed i did this uh, this happened that happened so many people some of the rgs have called and said that wow i, I was uh, going through anxiety your music helped then i feel fine i mean somewhere you know, the hard work is paying and somewhere the honesty is yeah. also working correct and i i just bow in gratitude i don't want the pride thing to ever come into me because there's the miles to go miles to go but yes i want to honestly pursue honestly keep doing what is to be done without any adulteration arrogance or pretension yeah, yeah i think uh, maybe the one word i would use is being grounded and <laughs> always always the neck is yeah. good on here no <laughs> that's to yeah. it won't look nice if we are like this or <laughs> it's just there yeah yeah very nice actually the way you put it <laughs> yeah you also represented india at the un commission i mean like i say you have uh the introduction itself is so amazing you know a linguist a writer you were represented india at uh, the un commission so each experience is different right i mean that's what i'm assuming because of course singing musical journey might be one thing and uh, these kind of things will have another set of experiences so how do you feel about this uh the whole uh, sense of giving or helping someone this uh, was in me right from childhood i still remember uh, we would be given uh, every saturdays we would be given 50 paisa to go and have us just eat anything that we wanted to mm. so that was a nice day so if i would go and stand and if i saw a, a poor child or something i would immediately say okay i will share this and i would do or during diwali if crackers were given if there were poor children i would just give crackers and jamba uh it's not to boast i'm just telling you my tendency yeah yeah, yeah. a blind i would just hold a hand and put them or help them i didn't know. again i said and whatever i've done in my life i never thought i was going to pursue them it was never done with that intent it all happened yeah. it just came to you naturally it happened i know it happened even today if it has happened to this level it has happened i didn't yeah, think okay. i would do step by step it was not a thought through or a methodical planning okay. it just went okay. with the flow and that flow is taking me to certain places certain spaces certain people and just enjoying the whole experience of it so yeah. by doing like i was just doing this i used to tutor poor children then i used to teach uh, free of cost to poor children so everything was happening 15 years back uh, one of a neighbor uncle captain captain bala a soldier air force pilot so he he was uh, with this ngo called indian development foundation he used to see me carry things and go around he used to say beta why don't you come and uh, instead of individually running why don't you come to our organization and uh, continue your yeah. goodness planning so that's the day i went and uh, i just initially was skeptical of being a part of organizations and all i i was too skeptical ki yeah. organization mm-hmm. what will do what will not happen or what will i be expected of and whatever but then it so happened that uh, slowly i went there i just went as a casual visit then they made me their ambassador and uh, over a period uh, i used to go i used to do whatever little i could do collecting funds for educational projects so and then slowly from collecting collecting little little funds it happened that i could bring in corporates to you know uh, yeah. donate for projects and it started building up and slowly i was uh, made one of the trustees of the organization so in such a case, scenario only then uh, ours is a un recognized organization our okay. founder is just 95 years young dr e r k pillai <laughs> our ceo is mm. prakash narayan sir so uh, it's a very simple very simple people with simple thoughts and so during this uh, i got this mail saying that uh, we have to send a team of women so from our organization we are okay. choosing you would you like to go 
said wow i mean what an honor yeah, how many can yeah. go up for you in uh, stage Correct. or in no you sitting in the yeah. general assembly attending yeah. things this so huge eye opener and a fantastic fabulous experience i thank my organization for no thinking me worthy i mean thinking me as worthy of being there there were about uh, about 19 members that went from india people from different works like somebody a scientist or someone a school uh, principal somebody else who was growing wing up a slum area so people from okay. all walks uh, came in so okay. it was a fabulous fantastic experience and uh, again another thing to be grounded of and grateful of nothing to be you no know, arrogant or be proud about you go yeah. and see the world at large then you see how many more problems are there so yeah, many people yeah. in so many ways so yes yeah. uh, uh, then that makes you okay fine in my life i i have to give back a lot then mm. always thinking what will i get what can i give yeah. back yeah. to my society to mother earth so yes i've been a part of the swachh bharat the things i took up uh, uh, myself on my shoulders of keeping my our area clean and awesome. personally appointed sweepers and i was getting the the, the drains cleaned before the monsoon awesome. and captain captain bala stood by me i was charging 50 rupees per uh, flat member and i was to keep the area around the society Clean. clean and the streets yeah. clean i took i requested the shopkeepers to keep their own waste bins so that you know yeah. they don't throw it and i'm happy they still Correct. continue and some of them after a point i had to stop because when uh, everything started getting politicized or everything you know when you start doing yeah. good there will be a lot of people that will want to take off the cream to their name or Correct. or interfere with you if you don't listen to them after point i and uh, i had to put a stop to it but i'm happy that people are following certain protocols and things it would be it would be such a place i mean if every one of us had civic sense and uh, certain social responsibility yeah yeah true uh so i'm coming back to the music part of it <laughs> so jingles bhajan spiritual uh music in the i think a couple of uh, bollywood movies too right the comedy movie a couple yeah. of them that you have composed also if i'm not wrong yeah. yes yes so composing music singing music which of it voice coaching i mean i i'm not even able to remember the things that you do so i'm just putting across whatever i remember uh there's so much of it right but is there something specific that you enjoy doing i'm sure you enjoy everything but some favorite uh, thing part of it okay let me tell you one more twist here i have also uh, acted in uh, television commercials and in film as well wow <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. um, basically i i love life i love experiences of life so earlier awesome. part of my life has been very reserved and reticent and all that i told you yeah now i'm just uh, all out there i mean any opportunity awesome. comes i feel i should just make good use of it it's about living yeah. it's about uh, experiencing life i feel whenever you express whether by teaching or performing or recording you are with life yeah yeah one of it excites me excites me to a great level when i get stage i'm elated in a different way when i get the mic i'm elated and when i'm teaching i'm in a different way so i love all of them you know it's like uh, it's like a, a mom who has many children <laughs> you can't pick one <laughs> yeah i think you've answered my question <laughs> <laughs> i really am self i'm telling you i don't know and i i didn't know i was so friendly with camera and uh, uh, some I, mean, i did my first safola rise ad and i did for some minakshi labs and i did for pantaloon and did some print ads trust me i didn't go somebody yeah, saw it and said can you send an audition from home 
sending an audition from home was not a problem for me. With my music, yeah. I didn't want to spend my time in studios waiting for my auditions and doing like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It was a start listening for a lot of these prior mainstream movies like Brahmastra and so many films. But at that point, yeah. I was uh, uh, at uh, Isha Center doing my seven day silence program. So when okay. they contacted okay. me, I wasn't available. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Very but, nice. Yeah. I feel life, I don't know. I just enjoy every bit of life, cooking. I also have my own brand called Earth Shastra where I make natural skin and hair care products. I feel in a whole day, there is so much to learn and give and do. Uh, I don't have time for anything else to yeah. think or brood or have vengeance or anger. Life is yeah. too short. And I think uh, the best part is you're doing it in a very calm way. <laughs> like, you know, there are people who do a lot of things in a day, but then there's that stress level, that, uh, you know, urgency to do things, and which is what uh, affects people, right? But I think you have this, uh, at least, I mean, from the interaction that we are having, I can di definitely see a sense of calmness and the way you do things and that is what makes it more enjoyable is what I think right so I owe it to all my masters uh, that I over a period follow and Sadhguru um, yeah Shri, and so many other spiritual masters that I follow I feel and then that clearly taught me there is a difference between having to do and wanting to do have to do this is a pressure. Yes. I want to do is a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So as a youngster, when I started on, like when I started on singing, I was not like this. Hmm. Because I had this performance anxiety, I told you, like I had the performance anxiety. Yeah, yeah. What will they tell me? How will it happen? Or if somebody took my voice and then didn't call, did they not like me? I was yeah, too, yeah. too obsessed with what others thought and what it made yeah. a lot of it was too much of an important thing in my life. Today I'm not. Yeah, I think that is how it is most of the times for everyone, right? Because we lead half our lives thinking about what will others say or you know, how is it? Is it right? Am I looking good am i looking am i sounding okay did i talk since it's like we have this constant self-doubt which keeps there's no, uh, there's no end to it yeah yeah i look a certain way i look a certain way but it's that's not going to be of importance if i carry myself in a certain way that will make a world correct of yes yes yeah I no like i think it's the perception that uh is the environment which we live in gives us that we carry those things with us and that becomes uh, our uh, habits and behavior and that's the perception we carry all along until there's some change that happens in your life either through books or like you said through spiritual uh, uh, ways and means or you know you're, you you find a guru and you get to know about these things i think those are the things which actually bring about some change in people's life Yes, yes. And we all need it early in our lives. Yeah. yeah. I think it all should be a part of the school curriculums and as a yes, series. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of kids are falling, you know, victims Stressed to the and, sibling, sibling, yeah. sibling rivalry and uh, your school uh, peer pressures and uh, this and that. So they are focusing so much into external uh, personality. Correct. Or some are just focused into education. We are not focusing in an overall grooming. Yeah. We are yeah. not uh, uh, equipped with the life skills. Correct. So either somebody is highly academic but socially awkward. Yeah. Or if somebody is so out on the societal thing and the in, in, in interiority is gone. Or yeah, their IQs correct. have gone for a toss. So we need to tell a child that a, a, a balanced diet of how a life should be. Yeah. Take children a long way 
they don't we don't have to pressurize children we don't have to put them in you bring this or as no yeah this, it's good yeah. for you it's good for you yeah and then this is not the be all and end all we have to say so many things i think uh, we we all we were we are all learning and today's world is full of informations and we get everything at the click of a button but that is the other side that person is not interacting with us so on a school level if we start right from the age that 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 very impressionable age you when you can easily mold whole thinking can become something else yeah yeah everything we do will be a joy trust me yeah <laughs> every face will be calm every act will come out of calmness yeah yeah i think uh, uh the way you put it across also right uh, from whatever i ask you the way you put it across is uh, really awesome uh, uh, vijaya because uh, the way you said about uh, picking up one of the musical thing about a mom and her kids <laughs> i didn't have second questions <laughs> after that same thing about what you have like if you want want it and if you want to have it like what is the difference and how would you react to it i think these are the small things which we need in our life which are going to you know at least reset and uh, it gives us an opportunity to reset right we have been thinking in a certain way but this kind of uh, information and this kind of uh, uh, knowledge just resets the way you're thinking and at least makes you think are you doing it you know are you at least going in the right direction or do you need something else uh, and that energy of calmness that you have right it's coming right over like <laughs> i am feeling so so good <laughs> to be very frank <laughs> you know what what we are all used to as human beings we are the complaining kinds yeah yeah we don't when we wake up we don't think i got another day to live we don't thank for the eyes we have we don't thank for the ears that are working we yeah. don't thank for the limbs that are working we don't Correct. thank for the plate of food that's what we are getting yeah all of us get it just we are blessed that we get it not just basic yeah. food we get what we want and we have we have more than what we want so are we even allowed to be sad aren't we being very very um what do i call it very selfish very i don't know i I'm think nitpicking nitpicking, nitpicking the i'm saying it's so vulgar so <laughs> bad yeah oh my hair is not like this i didn't get a matching chappal excuse me somebody doesn't even have a footwear yeah Correct. i don't like this food somebody don't doesn't have. have a food, have food yeah yeah so recently i had a burn here and then uh, one of my uh, couple of, whoever saw this was like oh my god you burnt i said no i burnt it there are people with whole body burns so let me not mm. magnify this that that's mm. how that is what has brought the calm in me whenever something yeah. happens a lot of things in my life journey i have faced a lot of things so we can't talk and it will be all about me in this entire wonder woman thing we can't be talking about every topic but i've had my own turmoils my roller coasters and my uh, curve balls yeah. and so many stressful times but then you don't fall victim and you show the victim card at all times yeah yeah when you see that you always see that there's somebody else who has suffered much more than this and that itself calms you yeah true always i feel always when if we are in gratitude yes I yeah the universe will take care of us yeah even if i woke up today it's a huge thing to thank yeah yeah i know i know yeah even i believe in that uh, you know uh, saying thank you for every small thing because <laughs> like you said uh, some things are about ourselves even like uh, the air the electricity that we get everything right i mean we should be so thankful to the kind of uh, comfort we have around us so yeah i totally agree with what you're saying we are not having to go and work in the fields or we are not having to walk miles to go search for our food yeah they searched their food and they ate 
we are getting everything a lot of us have even helps still yeah. we are complaining i mean i feel it's really absolutely bad behavior <laughs> i agree yeah so uh, i think uh, it's been like what do i say uh, it's been so knowledgeable uh, talking to you about so many different aspects i initially i was thinking maybe i'll it will be more about music but you know the kind of uh, bhandar of knowledge that you have has uh, actually made it even more uh, uh, worth worthy of this uh, conversation so thank you for that uh, vijaya but uh, let's take it a bit on the other side where i'll just ask few rapid fire questions which you have to answer very rapidly <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah let's see uh, yeah. simple questions <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We'll start. Yeah. A song that's currently on repeat in your playlist. Hmm. The one the recently I did. I not because it's mine, but it said, "Kai janmo se bula rahi hu, koi to reshta zarur hoga." some way this song is stuck to me and uh, it's giving me those uh, divine goosebumps i've been living yeah, this song. yeah when you sang itself i even i could feel it <laughs> very nice <laughs> okay uh, one artist you dream of collaborating with in future yeah in past i could say a lot in future shankar mahadevan of course uh, in the past i have had lots of dream artists kishor da ad verman Emma Subalakshmi yeah. Amma, too okay. much, too far fetched, but uh, I've had these dreams always within me. Thanks. So, uh, what's your go-to relaxation activity when you're not immersed in music? Meditation. Which one? Meditation. Meditation. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I'm sure you will have lot of activities there too. You write also, right? Yeah, I do. You know, do write when I. It's just natural. As thoughts come, yeah. as come, gardening, little bit of taking care of my plants, home plants, cooking. I love cooking. I'm a awesome. very good cook. You should experience one day. <laughs> I'm a good cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would love to. <laughs> it's very therapeutic. Anything yeah. except watching TV <laughs> or getting into. Uh, anything is i mean i love just reading a book meditation so many things to be done so which is the book or the author that that has influenced your life significantly uh the book death by sadguru okay uh, autobiography of a yogi you and uh, an apprentice to the himalayan master by shri m is i more i don't know naturally i have this uh, fascination for spiritual books yeah yeah uh your favorite aspect of performing live in front of an audience when you say aspect what is it what is your specific uh... no like what is it uh, that gives you that what do you say uh that interaction i'm not able to i mean yeah. i one is interaction not the uh, the artificial way organically when i just up, a time comes when i dissolve into the music and and when i open my eyes i see that the audience is also dissolved in my music that's a big high for me which happened in my recent concert to janmashtami concert i didn't realize i went into a trance when i actually opened my eyes i saw that the whole energy was different it's yeah. an amazing thing to be or experience yeah. Yeah, actually, it's an amazing experience for the audience as well. So I was fortunate enough to attend one uh, uh, such concert by Chandana Bala. So I went into a trance totally when I heard. You know, like you said, the energy itself is so different. He is of a different kind. She is a monstrous artist. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. He deserves a lot more. no but i am sure that is what even you experience uh, right when you are in such concerts 
the moment, energy is totally you different an artist or you the moment you have dissolved into the art form mm. there is no singer or a song everything is one resonance that's happening correct that's a good correct. space to uh any unexpected place where you found musical inspiration oh yeah it is uh, when you walk into um when you're traveling and you're suddenly going by the street and you suddenly see somebody you know just so unassuming you know toothless or anything they're just singing and you're just enjoying it so you feel that the one doesn't have to be a trained singer our soil has music in it yeah <laughs> i've heard in the tea gardens or i heard in fields i've heard in in calcutta in our growing up years when they used to uh you know, pull uh, heavy things or for building constructions they used to say something and do it you know how i found that so fascinating yeah so you don't expect music to ooze out of such places it's a place of hard work and labor yeah then you realize still... wow and i found music in elevator i found music in water falling out of a drain immediately some shruti hits me i said wow this 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 is this shruti this frequency so i hear yeah. music every day the birds chirping out of my uh, window a lot of people that's an irritant for me that's music yeah <laughs> my dog yeah. our pet when we sing the day first time he when when i chant, when sadguru chanted we were watching and he ch- he also went into that uh, and we thought it was random and repetitively whenever we put that chant he would start chanting do you expect your dog to chant or sing no no so many revelations in life music can come out of it no way or anyway yeah. <laughs> i agree completely <laughs> so uh, we know so much about you is there still any other hidden talent or hobby that uh, you might want to tell us oh i think you i told you i cook i like uh, my little gardening i like my the brand that i'm doing earth shastra again i've not gone a big way a lot of people say why don't you go a big way but the way i make my product is very unique uh, sneha if you want to know if there is something i haven't told you yeah yeah uh, so i when i make my products i put uh, chants and i put a prayer that me this product feel the person using so me it's not commercial yeah which is yeah. I'm not a factory i make it with my own hand so i do Correct. my finish my meditation then i put a chant then i prepare then i put a prayer then i send it across wow so yeah. that gives me a lot of so um that gives me a lot of uh, pleasure and satisfaction that an intent matters yeah yeah it I does water that intent matters because my glass of water will carry my energy when it goes to energy. the other correct yeah i think uh, that that is another thing that i've heard what you said even while cooking you know you sh- it seems like you should think only about positive things and how it's like even, you know if i were work cleaning a commode if i'm hmm. one with that i'm in a meditative state yeah yeah my aya bai is doing that and she's doing spit clean she is in a meditative mm. state correct yeah meditation is not sitting in one corner and doing that is one way you can be in that state with so well, the moment you are aligned with whatever you do doing yeah agreed even if even... i was singing an item song if i did that correct i'm yeah. in a meditative state yeah so these are the things these are my thoughts i feel don't do anything mechanically do it with involvement you want to help somebody do it with involvement you want to express anything do it with so i have a world full of people that call me ma okay. i'm this universal mother all my okay. students want to address me as ma or there are people that want to address me as didi but i'm happy being that mother somewhere they're seeing that mother factor in me that warm thing me a whole lot of people will say that uh, you're trying to be too good what is your motive i said there's no motive there's no motive it's just it, what comes all of this yeah. what is the harm in just being warm and nice and cordial what does it yeah. take yeah i know 
how do we get humiliating or hurting someone or being aggressive or arrogant or correct my mom has always taught like in tamil she would say obagaram pannalenalo abagaram pannare like even if you don't do good stay away from doing bad yeah agreed so my mother has been a great influence i have wonderful brothers my dad is so my whole family so you learn from everybody everyone has something to teach even yeah. my pet has something to teach a bird out there has a beggar on street has we just have to yeah. keep our eyes and ears open so and my only thing is uh, i should be humble very very humble very grateful very calm and i have more to see more to experience more to do just in whatever way i can i want to give back whether through music through social work through other i don't know these are the things like if me <laughs> yeah i think even this conversation is like so enriching right so <laughs> i'm sure a lot of people will have so much uh, to learn from this uh, vijaya I'm I'm so grateful which is why I said no I don't need I should not know what you're going to ask or what I should be speaking because anything I do has to come from honesty and purity yeah. if I read something prepare something then I'm saying what I've prepared no if I'm honest yeah. about something only that will come out of my mouth and that's exactly how it should be yeah I I think it's been amazing actually I always try to think that we should do it in 30 40 minutes but i get so much knowledge and what i want to listen to so you know it keeps on going and i'm sure our viewers too will definitely love to listen to uh, what you have to say and like i said you put it in such a beautiful way that i'm sure you know uh, people would have definitely got inspired after watching this yeah, thank you so much only thing i would say is uh... certain qualities we all have inherent qualities but we also make our mistakes we all make mistakes sometimes blunders but then uh, the idea is not to live in victim mentality or constantly remind ourselves of those errors or those blunders just once you have done those blunder learn how to be how Correct. not to be walk ahead yeah Well, and when we do that automatically our being changes our aura changes when we stand amidst people they feel a certain sense of calmness so we just yeah. have to keep cleansing ourselves the more we declutter automatically things uh, fall in place and as for you i really you've taken up such a wonderful initiative of glorifying women of our nation and i wish you, you all the very best and you've been such a wonderful host and you've made me feel so so much at ease and comfortable and uh, i wish that this this gets millions of followers and more and more people get to know of you and uh, you succeed in this pursuit and and you have a life filled with joy and peace and so full of health thank you thank you so much it means so much to me uh, vijaya <laughs> thank you uh, and just one last thing is uh, is there a place where people can reach you because i'm sure you know after listening to this conversation there'll be plenty of people uh, for different reasons i'm sure uh, you know so is there any place where they can reach you could text me on insta from there uh, uh, i can connect to them at the rate d i j a y w a s h a n k e r yeah okay so we we'll leave the link yeah, yeah. i will put it in the description box or whatever yeah and that's how i spell my name as an artist v i j a y w a y w a s h a n k e r yeah mm-hmm. for some sure. reason it's how it is and uh, they can always i'm available uh, to connect and for voice coaching or people ask me for so many things i mean that's okay i'm accessible yeah okay we'll leave the link in the description so people can reach out to you and uh, thank you once again it's really been my pleasure to host this episode likewise, likewise.
सुर की नदिया से बह के सागर में बादलों का भर से हल्के हल्के ओ मिले सुरक्षा तुम्हारा सुरक्षा तुम्हारा बने हमारा मी माय वॉइस इज लिटिल but it's still amazing <laughs> but yes so thank you for tuning in to another episode of beyond her story and remember to subscribe rate and share our podcast to continue celebrating the stories of extraordinary women until next time stay empowered and keep igniting positive change bye bye